Hey everybody, so today I figured I'd do something a little bit more different, uh, a little bit more of an interesting video. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to the Doctor Who iceberg, and if you're unfamiliar with this new hip iceberg trend, basically it's a really shitty way of doing a video essay, and that's the way I've always looked at it. I think they're interesting videos for the most part. It's basically trivia and a deep dive into what I would define as the subtext of any work. Uh, because the whole idea of the iceberg is that there are tiers of the iceberg going deeper in the more obscure. And the whole thing is you're supposed to know the trivia on all the interesting things. But uh, <laughs> it's just a video essay and analyzing certain forms of media. There are icebergs on TV shows, video games, movies, everything under the sun. And if you're unaware, uh, there is one on Doctor Who because... In my video essay, as I said, Doctor Who is subtext central, and there's a lot you could put into an iceberg. So today, I'm sitting here and watching all of this hour and 15 minute video by Beware, the amazing person behind the Timeless Child Ruined Everything video, which I linked to my Doctor Who video essay as a reference. And uh, we're gonna watch this, and there's several tears. <laughs> the, the sections get longer and longer as we get in. And uh, yeah, let's just start it. Here we go. For those of you unfamiliar, the tiered iceberg is a very popular image format where concepts relating to a certain topic are collected together and ranked from the most popular surface level. Also, disclaimer, I probably won't know most of the classic Who stuff. Confusing. I'm assuming a lot of Today, classic is going to be in this. Today, I'll look at the Doctor Who iceberg and briefly explaining each topic listed. As I'm sure you've gathered, the beginning is filled with simple information that's easy to understand. Yes. So please be patient as we work our way down to the truly bizarre in the depths below. If any of these topics seem interesting to you, don't hesitate to drop a comment on it down below, and maybe I'll make a more focused and in-depth video on it sometime down the line. Also, if you're a Doctor Who fan and you'd like to see more of my content in general, please subscribe Beware. and leave a like on this Ben's video. incredible. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. All right, enough of the intro. And Let's what, guys? dive in. Tier one. These topics are all <sighs> general knowledge about Doctor Who. Even if they've never Onyx watched Screwdriver a single with two episode R's. of the series, most people will be aware of these things through simple... David Tennant and Tom Baker. The BBC. The British Broadcasting Corporation, abbreviated as BBC, is the public service broadcasting company founded in 1922, headquartered yeah. in London. It owns the production and... Almost a hundred year anniversary. Doctor Who which premiered on November 23rd, 1963. 1963. David Tennant. The 10th Doctor, David Tennant, is arguably the most popular incarnation of the character. Yeah, I would the say so. The second actor to take on the role after the show's revival in 2005, he is often credited for the series' massive rise in popularity. He was so popular that the BBC considered cancelling the program when he announced his departure in 2010, <laughs> out of fear that BBC no one would watch without foreheads. TARDIS. Time and relative dimensions in space. This is a totally radically driving in space used by time lords to travel the universe. The Doctor's TARDIS, a Type 40, has a broken chameleon circuit. Yeah. This means that its cloaking feature is always malfunctioning, stuck as a 1960s police box, the form it took when the first Doctor arrived on Earth. The most notable feature of the TARDIS is that, due to transdimensional engineering, the inside of the ship is bigger than the outside. Time Lord. The Doctor is a Time Lord, a race of humanoid aliens that differ in many ways. The most mm -hmm. important differences are that Time Lords do not age, or at the very least, they age very slowly. Not unless this you're a Metacrisis many Doctor. Time Lords live to be thousands, if not millions of years old. <laughs> Secondly, Time Lords are far more intelligent than humans, with mental processing power and deductive abilities far beyond most high-speed computers. Bow ties are cool. This was a phrase commonly spoken by the 11th Doctor. It was in reference to the bow ties Did he always make this wore, list? usually said in response like the entries? to questioning sure. or mockery. Interestingly enough, probably just Eleven's like tenure as the Doctor actually posted positively somewhere. influenced the sale Reddit, of probably. bow ties around the world, really? doubling their market capitalization over Actually, I'm not surprised years. about that. <laughs> Sonic Screwdriver. This is a high-tech, multi-purpose tool that the Doctor typically carries at all times. Its features are constantly fluctuating. While originally its purpose was simply to turn screws, it now can hack computers, open locks, rewire circuitry, and that's just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. Today, it primarily exists for merchandising and plot convenience. <laughs> Dalek. It only Dalek exists to sell toys. <laughs> enemy, and most popular as well. 
a race of genocidal aliens that I think the Weeping Angels are a bit more popular, warriors, especially with modern Who fans. Set of armor with a laser weapon and manipulator tool. But yeah, Daleks are Daleks obviously Daleks are an iconic popular. staple of the series, most famous for the phrase they often repeat, exterminate. Tom Baker. Tom Baker is the there one actor is. who can compete with David Tennant for the role of most popular doctor. He was most popular he until David Tennant. the fourth actor Tennant. to take on the role for the longest tenure of any incarnation. Seven series from 1974 to 1981. Jesus. His image and persona are considered by many to be the prototype, the most concentrated and pure example of what it means to be the doctor. Tier 2. Oh. These topics are uh, simple concepts that a viewer will pick up after watching oh yeah. a season or two. Kulak, of fuck Typically off. Typically the revival <laughs> Not a lot. Most casual fans fall oh, into this category. Oh, God. K9. K9. A futuristic robot dog. This was a companion of the fourth Doctor in the 1970s and another staple of Doctor Who iconography. K9 was most useful for his encyclopedic knowledge and the laser mounted weapon in his nose. Starring in several spin-offs, the character did make a brief appearance in the Revival series, along with Sarah Jane Smith. Gallifrey. The home planet to all Time Lords, and the believed birthplace of the Doctor. Believed this birthplace. massive orange planet is marked Until by series 12, city, boys. <laughs> a utopia-like city containing Fucking the timeless bubble. child. We love Only it. Only Time Lords are permitted inside the Citadel, as Time Lord is actually a rank to be achieved. Yep. Those who live outside are simply known as Gallifreyans. Gallifreyan. Two hearts. As a Time Lord, the Doctor's physiology differs greatly from humans. The most notable difference is that he has two hearts, a binary cardiac system. Other interesting differences include a respiratory bypass system that allows them to survive strangulation, three mm. brain stems, and an internal body temperature of 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. The Doctor, and he has 27 not brains. Doctor Who. The titular character of the series is not named it Doctor actually have 27 brains. The title he goes by in-universe is simply The Doctor. The Doctor. Yeah. This concept is in reference My to main? the way fans of the show will correct non-fans who assume the character's name is Doctor Who. Hulock. Hulock is an abbreviation of Doctor Who and Sherlock, oh. two popular British TV dramas both helmed by Stephen Moffat in the early 2010s. The term originated on Tumblr, where fans Tumblr. of the series would envision stories <laughs> where the heroes of both shows could meet and interact. This concept was also used as a blanket term, a signifier in blog bios that led strengthened only more by the fact that Stephen fans. Moffat wrote both shows this was at the often time. Often abbreviated further to Super Who Lock, which included the CW series Supernatural. What the fuck? That's Regeneration. What? Regeneration is a physical process that Time Lords <laughs> undergo upon receiving a fatal injury. Yep. Welling up with regeneration energy, they are perfectly healed, but every cell in their body is altered to match new DNA. While regeneration changes physical appearance, it also has a tendency to alter the personality of whoever undergoes it. it has the a tendency. process appears to be a physical time. skill that can be controlled, as characters like Romana and the Master have shown varying oh, well, yeah, the master, of I chosen guess. customization when changing their it body. It doesn't really change personality. Tier 3. At this stage, we uh, have knowledge that is generally accepted among more engaged fans of the show. Yeah. They likely own at least all. one piece of Doctor Who merchandise and usually have a few friends who also watch the show. Night of the Doctor. This short one-off special aired exclusively online as a prelude to the 50th anniversary special, The Day yep. of the Doctor. This marked the first so on-screen appearance of Paul McGann reprising his role as the 8th Doctor since the 1996 television movie. This was also his final adventure, leading to his regeneration and subsequent entry into the last great time war. Classic Who. This uh, is the first 26 seasons of Doctor Who. I need to watch more Classic Who. I haven't watched any more since this video essay. In 1989. It spans the television I need adventures to at least finish Tom of the Baker. first seven Doctors, from William Hartnell to Sylvester McCoy. Depending on who you ask, the 1996 movie could be considered the final episode of Classic Who, although many consider it in a separate category from both classic and modern Who. Yeah. Time Lord Victorious. It's kind of just like a bridge into both. The Time Lord Victorious is a like story a concept conceived by Russell That's T. Cool. Davies to be explored during the final stint of the 10th Doctor's run. 
Due to the I nature of his fan Time Lord episodes, shown only as four specials instead of a proper season, the Time Lord Victorious concept was contained primarily in the episode The Waters of Mars. Yes, sir. In this episode, the Doctor, like favorite episode. overcome by grief and frustration, breaks the laws of time, choosing to change a fixed point and save the life of a woman who was meant to die. He deems himself the winner, the sole survivor of the Time War, the Time Lord Victorious. His hubris is quickly checked, however, when the woman he saved takes her own life in order to preserve the timeline. So fucking This concept good. and dark mental state was later explored in the multimedia Time Lord Victorious series, where the Tenth Doctor descends down a path of villainy, determined to alter the fabric of the universe itself. War Doctor. The War Doctor refers to the incarnation of the Doctor between the Eighth and Ninth, who spent his entire life battling in the Time War. Because he rejected his title of healer and wise man in order to wage war, he also did not use the moniker of Doctor during this time. Portrayed by John Hurt, he was revealed in the Series 7 finale Name of the Doctor, and featured prominently in The Day of the Doctor, where he was shown once again accepting the title before regenerating into Christopher Eccleston's incarnation. Mm -hmm. Influenced Regeneration this concept refers to the idea that regeneration is a process that can be influenced by both the conscious and subconscious mind of the Time Lord undergoing yeah. it. Mainly the Eighth We've Doctor's seen regeneration and, the master and both of course consciously master. alter their appearance, but there have been clues that the Doctor, who is less skilled in regeneration, subconsciously influenced his own. Obviously, if he's less skilled in regeneration, his own face perfect Kaisili, sense for him to be the origin of regeneration as a way to remind himself to <laughs> always save as many people as possible. Oh, yeah. Other, more subtle hints include Ted's right young, handsome appearance and more human emotionality <sighs> as a result of falling in love with Rose Tyler, and Eleven's young face and whimsical nature as a response to being in his final yeah. incarnation. This was Even in a video of Even Scottish his. accent could be attributed to missing Amelia Pond, who Eleven huh. envisioned in his final moments. That is cool. The hybrid. The hybrid is a concept introduced in Series 9. I don't think that was ever Time intentional, Lord but it's from cool that it's convenient a collection in that of way. minds uploaded from the experiences of every Time Lord. The prophecy stated that a hybrid creature, born of two warrior races, would stand over the ruins of Gallifrey and unravel the web of time, breaking a billion billion hearts to heal its own. After surviving the Time War, Lord President Rassilon feared it's that so the hybrid cool that the would soon became the hybrid. and lead to Gallifrey's fall. That's my well, interpretation, at least. The two warrior races were Time Lord and Dalek. This was never specified in the prophecy. While there have been many candidates for this role throughout the series, the Doctor and Clara Oswald are definitively the hybrid, as mm -hmm. they are the only instance in which every element of the prophecy is met. I have more on that in this video here, if you're interested. Torchwood. Torchwood is most well known for the Torchwood Institute, the British secret service established by Queen Victoria to protect the world from alien threats. This institute was the focus of the spin-off series of the same name, yep. which featured Captain Jack Harkness in the lead role. The name Torchwood originated as an anagram of Doctor Who, which was used to label tapes of the revival series to prevent pirating and leaking online. That's true. Doctor Who, not the Doctor. This idea is in reference to the fact that, when the series was first airing, referring to the titular character as Doctor Who was deemed as acceptable and even commonplace. Even if the character oh, was just yeah. called Doctor in universe, he was credited as Doctor Who and was referred to as such by many people who spoke of the show. Mm -hmm. Because of this, those who tout it's the Doctor, not Doctor Who, are ironically showing their lack of knowledge and experience with the series. Tier 4. These are I guess that's interesting. fans of the show. They not uh, only have watched the majority of the available episodes, yeah. but they likely enjoy dabbling in fan theories and learning factoids about the production, too. Everything after this tier delves into yeah, the Yeah, I got all this. If you talk about it in public, you'll probably get strange looks. I don't know if Theta Weeping Sigma, angels but... Are time lords. This is I just don't recognize the name. Born from speculation that the Weeping Angels yeah. have no given origin. They're explained to be very powerful, very ancient beings who are intrinsically bound to time itself. These facts, coupled with the fact that Rassilon felt the need to mention them during his speech in the end of time, caused much speculation that Weeping Angels were either some form of proto-Time Lords, or perhaps ancient Time Lords evolved into them. 
because this is only it was answer, just a reference no solid consensus I don't think so at all it doesn't make any sense linked. how time was you become weeping angels the watcher is a peculiar piece of doctor who lore a mystery from the days before regeneration was as well defined as it is in the modern canon this strange white being stood silently observing the doctor and his companions mm -hmm. save for some telepathic communication the audience never gets to hear toward the end of his fourth incarnation leading up to his regeneration into the fifth at this point the watcher merges with tom baker and peter davidson's fifth doctor it's just like the fifth doctor's essence given rippling was back the watcher toward was the, the end of tom baker the time. weird in the expanded material of it's just his soul audio, it's kind of like are explained to be how the heartbeat would happen before the, the meta crisis to donna how she would hear the heartbeat sort of the same thing it's just like time born from the moment of regeneration rippling back on him both the fifth and tenth doctors have seen watchers before their deaths in this expanded media unfortunately when did ten see the watcher extent of our understanding about them inspector what? space when did ten see the watcher Inspector Spacetime is a parody of Doctor Who, a 1962 British sci-fi drama from the fictional world of Community, a sitcom created by Dan Harmon. The series follows the Inspector oh, is he talking about and the his Ood? loyal constable as they the battle Gorgons and travel through right. time or space, <laughs> but never both. While an obvious riff on many of the staples of Doctor Who, what is most interesting about Inspector Spacetime is that it actually has a rather expansive lore, comprised entirely by community fans. The Inspector, which has had 13 incarnations, is an Infinity Knight from the planet Kaya Clash. Through the process <laughs> Infinity of metamorphosis, Knight. the Inspector can change his face and <laughs> personality, and can thereby be played by a new actor. He travels through time or space with his booth, or bioorganic omnidirectional time helix. The show also has an what infamous and terrible 1981 <laughs> Christmas special, a reference to the similar Star Wars holiday special from the same era. There are a million of these hilarious nods to Doctor Who and other <laughs> popular sci-fi series. I highly recommend you read the wiki if you want a good laugh. You can check it out at madmanwithabooth.fandom.com. Madman with a booth. The actually received a very <laughs> short-lived web series. Quote, untitled web series about a space traveler who can also travel through time. Unquote. Which saw seven episodes in 2012. It's really just a very fun rabbit hole to jump down. My favorite bit of trivia, though? In the community universe, every fan of the show hates the fifth inspector. The only female one. Their reasoning, not because she's a woman, but because she sucks. This aired in 2013. Prophetic. Half human. <laughs> this concept oh, originated from the 1996 movie starring Paul McGann. In the film, the doctor confesses to a stranger that he's actually half human on his mother's side, not fully Time Lord. This is punctuated by the fact that the Doctor is able to open the Eye of Harmony, something that requires human DNA. This idea is referenced once again God. during the 12th Doctor's run. Me any suggests sense. the Doctor's lineage is more complex than he lets on Why? during the events of Hell Why did she say that? But the Doctor remains coy and chooses not to respond directly. Thank of course, God this concept for that. is meaningless in the wake of the Timeless Children reveal, but if you choose to ignore these recent changes to the canon, then there is an explanation for the, quote, damning evidence of the Doctor's human biology in the film. Damning I explained several evidence. potential resolutions in my review of the movie, which, if you're curious, you can watch here. Rubber Toe Replicas. This is a company that produces officially licensed, high-quality replicas of various props from Doctor Who. Yep. Known primarily for their recreations of sonic screwdrivers, they also sell a model vortex manipulator and have sold props like the moment, a miniature Pandora, I want the moment, confession dial, and the tome recounting the history of the. I want form. the moment. I'm Your gonna look that is up right now. Nerd heaven, provided you have deep enough pockets. A mo Headless the right moment. Killed Jack. This is another theory yeah, that I seems know this to one. be very heavily implied by the main series. After being made immortal by the gonna be in a good mango Captain store. Jack Harkness lived a life of adventure, protecting the Earth with Torchwood and occasionally adventuring with the Doctor. At some point, billions of years in the future, Jack becomes the face of Bo, an enormous head that many believe to be the oldest being in existence. As the theory goes, something had to happen to Jack to transform him from a humanoid into a talking head. 
Mm -hmm. During the 11th Doctor's tenure, River Song purchases a Vortex manipulator from Dorian Maldivar, who claims he acquired it off the wrist of a handsome time agent. While Jack definitely fits that description, what's more interesting is that Dorian regularly made dealings with the Headless Monks. They even end up beheading him. It would make sense that the monks were the ones to behead Jack. Their process keeps the heads of their victims alive, which would explain why Jack never regrew a body and became the face of Bo. Theta Sigma Theta Sigma was the Doctor's nickname in the Time Lord Academy. It was mm. what he was called by other Time Weird. Lords and was meant not to be spoken outside of the Academy. Despite this, it is not his real name. However, yeah, when many imagine. people stumble upon one of the sources of this information, Happiness Patrol or the Armageddon Factor, they mistakenly believe that this is the Doctor's true name. It is not. Holy that mother. That said, it was part of the message that River Song left in the Pandorica open. The moment replica cost 1,500 pounds. new 13. This is a fan-made audio drama series designed to replace the work of Chris Chibnall by rewriting the entire era with yes. a new 13th Doctor, Let's go. new companion, and new stories. This series was created by YouTuber Beware, who... Eh, hey, who put this on here? <laughs> but seriously, if you hate the Chibnall era and wish something different existed in its place, or even if you ah. just want more Who content, give Beware. this series a listen. You might really like it. You can listen to the first seven episodes right here. I'm with you, man. The Doctor Married the Doctor's Daughter. This is in reference to David Tennant, who married Georgia Moffat. Yes, sir. Georgia is actually the daughter of Peter Davidson, so the Tenth Doctor married the Fifth Doctor's daughter. Even stranger, Georgia played the character Jenny on Doctor Who during the Tenth Doctor's run. She was the coolest bit of trivia ever. Of the Doctor's offspring, she played the Doctor's daughter. So the doctor married the doctor's daughter in more ways than twice. <laughs> Very strange. Tier five. Uh, <laughs> okay. Cardinal Master Plan, I know that. Big finish, yeah. Uh, Rory is the master. Hello, God, no. Morby's faces the other. Shalka Valyard. I know most of these. Who know about the topics in I think the only ones I don't know are these prosecutions. Could be classified ones. as super fans. Nothing strange from here mouth is noises. Simple or easy to wrap your head around. Every topic has at least two schools of thought regarding it. Mm. The other. One of the three ancient time lords that founded Gallifreyan society. The other is a mysterious individual who worked alongside Rassilon and Omega to build the citadel and found what Gallifrey would become in the future. We love the Cardinal no Master known Plan. About the other, but it is implied that after having a falling out with the other two founders, he tossed himself into the birthing looms on Gallifrey, and it is heavily implied that he was reincarnated as the Doctor. Doctor. The Morbius Faces During the fourth Doctor serial, The Brain of Morbius, the Doctor faces off against Time Lord criminal Morbius, and they use a Time Lord technology to have a mental battle where their previous regenerations are shown on screen as they fight. After the fourth, third, second, and first Doctor's faces appear, several more then appear afterwards. While some people interpret these to be the faces of Morbius's previous regenerations, many believe them to it's, be Doctors before yeah. William Hartnell. It, that was this the was intention, in fact probably. the intention of the writers of the episode, but yeah. later stories seem to clearly retcon this idea. Until you get to the timeless children. I'm glad that that is still left open to interpretation. The Valyard. During the sixth Doctor story, Trial of a Time Lord, the Doctor is put on trial on Gallifrey for Trial of the Time Lord is the laws of time. Like one of turns out that his it's the only Colin Baker story I've seen, but I really liked it. As the Valyard, which is later revealed to be the Doctor himself. It's a good story. It's really long, though. The Valyard's whole series exact long. identity is vague, but he exists as some form of the Doctor's darker nature from some point between his twelfth and final regeneration. Mm -hmm. The Valyard wanted the Sixth Doctor to be executed so that he could take the remaining regenerations as he was all out at this point. We haven't seen the Valyard are we gonna return see the in any of the television media, they although better he has bring him back in some audio dramas. Time will tell As in, like, we exactly need to see a Doctor regenerate into it. It's gotta be, like, the final episode of the show. 
They got a lot of During shit the they have to the like, get pay off special, too. The night of the doctor, we see Paul McGann's eighth doctor regenerate after drinking an elixir meant to influence his regeneration to turn him into yep. a warrior. However, in the novelization of the scene, it is revealed Ooh. that the elixir was nothing more than lemonade and dry ice. That is that the cool. The desire to be a warrior is what would eventually transform him into John Hurt's war doctor. Whoa. They should have put that in While the fucking... the woman could refer out of the to doctor many short. characters throughout Doctor Who, this is particularly oh, okay. in reference to the woman seen during the end I of time, clarified that. the 10th Doctor's final this. story. A mysterious character, her true identity is never actually revealed. Doctor's although many mother, speculate that she is perhaps the Doctor's mother. Some mm -hmm. may think that she is the Doctor's daughter, perhaps she's Susan, or any other influential woman from... Susan's cool, because she kind of looks like what Susan would look like if she was older. Age. Same haircut, kind of. This is in reference to the fact that the Doctor's age is and always has been incredibly confusing. At least since the classic series ended. At one point during the Eighth Doctor audio dramas, the Doctor decides to reset his age to zero and begin counting again, as he forgot exactly how old he was at that point. This seems to rectify the fact that the Ninth Doctor claimed to be 903 years old, which is slightly younger than the Seventh Doctor said he was at several points. The Doctor might be 2,000 years old, he might be 1 million, he might Weird. be 4 billion. No one really knows for sure, and this is one of the reasons why. Well, he is why. not four billion years old death. because he was being reborn in heaven. Curse of the Fatal Death. That's not his actual age. It's a hilarious comedy parody of Doctor Who, yeah. starring Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean as the Doctor. It's so Made for the fucking Red good. Charity telethon and it's Stephen Moffat wrote it, guys. This parody episode is a good writer. The adventures of the Doctor and his companion battling against the Master and the Daleks. I would explain more, but if you haven't seen it yourself, oh, I, I watch highly, it. Yes. highly implore you watch to go it. do so. It is absolutely hysterical for any Doctor Who fan. Rowan Atkinson also, is so somehow, fucking good. Also, predicted that the 13th Doctor would be a woman. I have no idea how this happened. Big Finish. Big Finish is the company that produces the vast we love majority Big of Doctor Who audio They brought Eccleston back, come on. At this point, there's probably more Doctor Who content created by Big Finish than actual television episodes of the show. Yeah. This is such an enormous backlog of episodes and stories that if you're hurting for more Who content, this is the place to go. I'll also note that Big Finish has a tendency to write stories that fill in or fix plot holes from the mainline series, and also they're on Spotify if you want to watch for them for free. That received rather poor writing during their. There own are a few that are not on there, but there are a lot of good ones on Spotify. Shalka. They can just listen this to. This refers to the Scream of the Shalka, a very short-lived Flash animated yep. series designed to continue. I literally only know this because of TV movie, Clever Dick Films. New Doctor portrayed by Richard E. Grant. The series only had a few episodes before the 2005 revival was announced, and so this version of the Ninth Doctor never truly got to live on. Mm -hmm. There was one short story, The Feast of the Stone, which was published in 2004, but that is the end of this particular continuity. Rory is the master. What is this? This was a I fan need to know. that originated in 2010 to 2011, while series 5 and 6 were originally airing. Well, this might seem like a ridiculous because theory. You have he to can consider come back there was to actually a substantial to amount death. of evidence to support come back to it. life. First of all, Rory was not at all impressed when he first entered the TARDIS. Combine this with the fact that his daughter, River Song, Hard has evidence. Time Lord abilities, and the fact he that wasn't Rory impressed. somehow keeps returning from death repeatedly what? to a rabid 2010 fan base, this seems to make a lot of sense. What? Of course, Rory Williams is not the master, but it was a ton of it was fun literally... he thought he might do. Alternate Time Wars. They walked through why River Song War, could as we regenerate. Know from the Revival series is not the first instance of a great battle between the Time Lords and an enemy ravaging the entire universe across all of time. What exactly constitutes a Time War is up for interpretation, but the concept itself has appeared in various different pieces of Doctor Who media, most notably the War Under Heaven, but we'll touch on that later. The very first instance of this concept was Alan Moore's 4D War in the comics of Doctor Who magazine mm. all the way back in 1981. 
Damn. The existence of these alternate time wars gave credence to why the big one most viewers know from the Revival series is called the Last Great Time War. Strange Mountain. Uh. During the two-part oh. episode from Series 3, Human Nature and Family of Blood, the Tenth Doctor records a set of instructions for Martha to follow yeah, I know this. disguised as a human. So why is it called episode, strange mouth noises? Call it the video the and human, human nature. But I'll know it then. Don't call it fucking strange mouth noises. YouTube. That could be 12 different In things. It, he needs to talk I know this, of course. For that portion of it's time. so great. And so David Tennant just riffs about a band that he I likes. Hate pass. Some additional <laughs> nonsense. And then he ends it by making what he describes as strange mouth noises that go like this. Bingle bongle, dingle dangle, yickety doo, yickety da, ping pong, lippy, lippy tappy tu ta. Look it up if you don't believe me. Cartmel master <laughs> plan. The Cartmel master plan was a narrative decision made by Andrew Cartmel, the script editor at the very end of the classic series run. He believed that yep. the primary problem with the series was that the Doctor was no longer mysterious. His planet, his people, they've all been explored. So in order to add some mystery back into the character, Cartmel slowly started to allude to the fact that the Doctor was more than just a regular Time Lord. I don't understand the philosophy behind the Cartmel Master Plan. That the Doctor was in fact the Other, as explained earlier in this tier, and that he was essentially the reincarnation <laughs> of a Time It's like, the Doctor is not mysterious anymore, so let's just spell out the entire lore. Obviously there was meant to be build up and mystery toward it. I think the way New Who does Doctor Mystery is way better. Lord like God. with Heaven Sent and this idea was never canonized. Implications behind con the confessions At and stuff. At this point, I'd like to take a Other quick break secrets and that ask we don't know about him. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. The BBC Patreon. is notorious for Beware. copyright striking videos that easily fall into the Don't I know it. Use. And because of that, all of my most popular Doctor Who videos BBC. don't see a shred of revenue. So if you're able and you enjoy my content, please consider making a monetary donation on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can access my Discord server where you can talk to me as well as my production team Beware. and the voice actors behind New 13. At my highest tier, you can even request for me to make a specific video of your choice. That said, liking, subscribing, and sharing the video are all ways that you can help me grow as well. But even just by watching this, you're helping me out. So thank you. Tier 6. Okay, uh, 6B, obviously I know that. What the fuck? I know Dimensions in Time. I know the Doctor's the Master's Brother. I guarantee I know some of these, but they just have weird names that don't make any sense. And we'll, 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 we'll see. This is where I'm pretty sure I know more than what I think obscure. I know. With most of these topics, even fans of the show are likely to scratch their heads if you bring these up. Proceed with caution. Proceed the with final caution. Game. This was the planned final episode of season 11 of the classic series, meant to cap off the antagonistic relationship between the Doctor and the Master. Unfortunately, the episode was canceled oh, yeah. yep. after Roger yeah. Delgado's Roger Delgado passed. death. The story was to have a shocking revelation about the two Time Lords, that they were related in a way closer than most thought, perhaps that the Master was actually a proto-version of the Valyard, an amalgamation of the Doctor's darker side. This cool. episode has since been recreated exactly in the same production feel of the episodes of the era by Studio Severn here on YouTube. Huh. If you like the That's third cool. Doctor and the stories from this era of the show, I highly recommend you watch their seven-part story, The Final Game. Peter Davidson Meet. This is a pretty fun one. <laughs> Peter Davidson, what the who fuck? played the fifth Doctor, also starred as Meet, the living meal for guests at the end of the universe, an event from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 1980 really? TV series. There's not much more to this. It's just a fun little fact that most people don't know. <laughs> That's season cool. Season 6B. At the end of Season 6, the classic series, the second Doctor is exiled to Earth by the Time Lords and forced to regenerate. However, this is only the second regeneration to take place in the show so far, and it's not even called regeneration yet. On top of that, there was a six-month gap between this episode, The War Games, and the third Doctor's first episode, Spearhead in Space. 
So during that six month gap, various publications continued to produce Doctor Who content featuring the second Doctor, mm -hmm. but during his exile on Earth. This led fans to believe that perhaps the second Doctor didn't fully regenerate until Spearhead in Space, and that there was, in fact, a period of time where Patrick Troughton's Doctor was exiled on Earth, dubbed Season 6B. The canonicity of the season is, like most spin-off material, Absolutely fucking Dimensions nothing. Because <laughs> why would it be? Time was a two-part charity special crossover between Doctor Who and the soap opera EastEnders. God, it actually no. features the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh Doctors, and it also happens to be generally considered one of the worst pieces of Doctor Who media ever created. No. You can really <laughs> watch it as a parody to get any enjoyment out of it. But for those of you who are curious, it is available to watch on YouTube yeah, anytime it is. you want. Zagreus really sits is. inside your head. Zagreus sits inside your head. Zagreus lives among the dead. Zagreus sees you when you're dead and eats you when you're sleeping. Michael Jackson movie. What? So this one was actually, nah, I'm just kidding. Zagreus is an anti-time okay, creature from the eighth Doctor serial, Zagreus. Okay. This was both Big Finish's 50th story, and it was released to coincide with Doctor Who's 40th anniversary. Because of this, it featured not only Paul McGann, but also Peter Davidson, Colin Baker, and Sylvester McCoy. With Ooh. a surprise appearance from the third Doctor, John Pertwee, Aww. done by using previously existing This was close to when he passed, voice. isn't it? The oh, actual right, story right. is incredibly complex and fascinating. Cool. But to simplify things as much as possible, the monstrous Zagreus is unleashed inside the TARDIS and it takes over the mind of the Doctor. To explain anything more than that would really be spoiling the story, so I suggest you give this one a listen. But maybe not as your very first audio story. Hmm. Michael Jackson movie. So this is a weird one. As you all know, after what? the classic series concluded in the late 80s, the BBC Why? was shopping around for a way to revive the Oh, series. really? It eventually settled what, what the fuck? the 1996 television movie starring Paul McGann. But yeah, I'm assuming... That, in 1989, Paramount Pictures actually pitched a version of the film to the BBC with Michael Jackson as the titular Time What the time fuck? Lord. I'm not joking. And the kicker? Their second pick was Bill Cosby. <laughs> would not have aged. Him. The Corsair. Created what by Neil fuck? Gaiman, the Corsair. Corsair is another renegade Time Lord and friend HS70. of the Doctor. Their stories are scattered you. amongst various comics. Uh, the Corsair was one of the first instances of a Time Lord changing gender in regeneration and mm. was known to have an Ouroboros tattoo somewhere on their body in every incarnation. The Corsair met his demise in the Bubble Universe in The Doctor's Wife, also penned by Neil Gaiman. Was that his name? I know. Is his name Corsair? No fucking way. I know, I, I know who that Time Lord is. I didn't know his but name was Corsair. This is Neil I can't Gaiman's believe I forgot OC, that, I guess. The Guardians, also known as the Sixfold God and Lighteners, or the Accord. The Guardians mm. of Time are elemental beings, each representing a fundamental aspect of reality itself. To be quite frank, they're basically like living infinity stones, and that's most likely what they were based off of. That's upsetting. These are incredible cosmic beings, capable of tearing apart galaxies and altering time on a grand scale. As with lots of the cooler stuff from Doctor Who's history, there's a ton of confusing continuity following the Guardians. There are only supposed to be six of them, but sometimes there's just two, sometimes there's nine. In one story, they were created by Rassilon. In another, they existed before the universe itself. They're very hard to track, but they have some really fun stories that are written about them. The Doctor mm. is the Master's God, brother. no. As discussed previously, the final game was canceled due to Roger Delgado's death. Uh, as said, there was meant to be a big reveal in that story. It was a joke, the guys. Between the doctor and it was the a master. joke in the Sound of Drums. While we're not sure exactly what that reveal it was, a was joke. the most commonly accepted story is that the doctor is the master's brother. This was reinforced at one point where the it doctor wouldn't be bad, master, but and as he is supposedly burning to death, he yells, just... "Doctor, how could you do this to your own?" implying brotherhood 
of course, this would be debunked later in series three when the doctor it doesn't outright tells really... Martha that the master is not his brother. But of yeah. course, if this is anything like the Morbius faces, maybe next year Chris Chibnall will give us all a surprise. <laughs> but they actually are. Brothers. He would. He would. Holy shit! I'm, I'm a bit scared now. Fuck! He's gonna do it, isn't he? There's no fucking way. Because uh, why would the master oh care God. to help the doctor? Lungboro. This novel there. was published in 1997 and is the culmination of the Cartnell master plan. Oh. In the story, it is revealed that the Doctor is in fact the pseudo-reincarnation of the ancient Time Lord known as the Other. Because this was published in the wilderness years between the movie and the revival series in 2005, its canonicity was up in the air and still is to this day, although most people will agree that it is non-canon and that the Doctor is not the Other. Yep. Tier 7. Uh, okay, I know Doctor Who and the Daleks. I know Time Lords are future humans. I know Renewal, not Regenerations. I know the Dream Lord is the Valyard. Uh, I think I know the Master is the War Chief. That's from the Derek Jacobi audio thing, I th I'm, I'm assuming. And I don't know the other four. Any sane person should turn back now. <laughs> Understanding these ideas places you at the fringe of society, a walking repository of deep Whovian lore. Renewal, God. not regeneration. Literally 90% of the these William are Hartnell's thanks to Clever Dick doctor films. Changed into Patrick Troughton's second doctor. The concept of regeneration yep. was only in its Referred to as a renewal. In fact, at this People point, it was the writers the of the show considered this to be something closer to renewal, as though his body had somehow reversed his age, not changed its genetic makeup. Even the transition from the second to the third doctor was not called regeneration on screen, not by the doctor and not by the Time Lords. It was just called changing his face. Mm -hmm. This led some to believe that the very first regeneration was actually not regeneration and therefore did not count towards the 13 total lives no. available to the doctor. That would be very As convenient, from our discussion but of obviously not. Six B earlier, the show's lack of clarity on these subjects led to quite a bit of speculation and theorizing. Yeah, I can only this. imagine. This is just one such example. Doctor Who and the Daleks. This is a really fun one. <laughs> no, this is Doctor great. Doctor Who and the Daleks is a 1965 science fiction movie starring Peter Cushing as Doctor <laughs> Who. That's right, not the Doctor. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. This film was meant to capitalize on the popularity Dalek of the Mania. TV show and Dalek exists Mania. entirely inside its own continuity. Doctor Who is a kindly old scientist, a human from Earth, who built a time and space machine in his backyard. Due to an unfortunate mishap, Doctor Who, Ian, Barbara, and Susan, who are all very different from the television counterparts, are whisked away to an alien planet where they must face off against the evil Daleks. This movie actually received a sequel, Daleks Invasion of Earth 2150. Oh, I it thought it was going to be the actual the names, Dalek Invasion the of Earth episode. Daleks themselves were really what brought people in to watch these movies. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. You can find relatively high quality rips of them on YouTube if you look just a little bit. But definitely know that they are nothing like the show that you may be used to. Time mm. Lords are future humans. Ah, uh, no. Yet another popular It's actually kind of cool, a cool this idea. One posits that the Time Lords of Gallifrey are actually just the human race who, after billions of years of evolution, invented time travel, traveled back to the early universe, and but found they a exist world at that would one day become Gallifrey. This theory was used to smooth over a lot of the strange inconsistencies of the canon or just simple questions that fans had, including but not limited that to is cool. why did Time Lords look just like humans? Because it's not why ridiculous. Why is the Doctor so fond of Earth? Why did the Doctor say he's half human on his mother's side? This theory has been around for a very long time, and it's yeah. so popular that some people still think that it will eventually weasel its way into becoming canon at some point. But I don't I think doubt. so, because obviously it changes a lot of things. But I don't think it's a completely Marvel fucked comics. theory like some of the other ones. Along with several other because popular it makes properties a bit of from the sense. 1980s and 90s, including Transformers and G.I. Joe, Doctor Who actually exists canonically 
inside the Marvel Comics multiverse. What? Specifically in the universe of Earth 5556. These what? These stories, like many in Marvel Comics, covered the exact sci-fi cosmic adventures that you would expect from the Doctor. What the hell? They even have an appearance from every Doctor 1 through 8 and a brief flash forward to an unnamed future Doctor. If you're into comics, especially from this era, definitely check these out. They're a lot of fun. The Dream huh. Lord is the Valyard. As discussed previously, the Valyard comes alive at some point between the Doctor's 12th and final incarnation. Yeah. What most because people it's assume this very the exact the same kind of character. The Dream Lord is an amalgamation of all his dark, like, it, it spelled out in Amy's Choice. An amalgamation of all the Doctor's hatred turned against him gives it a voice as he describes it. That's pretty much the same as the, the Valyard, except the Valyard exists canonically within the Doctor's regen regenerations. I just really want more impact when we see the Valyard again, if we do see him again. Because that would be cool to see him become the Doctor at some point. It would have been cool to see that play out in Time Lord Victorious, maybe. Uh, because th that canonically, maybe if there was like a branching timeline... I'm surprised they didn't do this, because... When Time Lord Victorious happens, that is between his 12th and final regeneration canonically. 10 to 11 is between 12th and final. They could have absolutely done like a parallel timeline where at the waters of Mars, the Doctor actually became Time Lord Victorious and then was reincarnated as a Valyard. That would have been cool. Why didn't they do that? Obviously, like, I don't know. I think that's not a half bad idea. I think that would be cool because it makes it so that the Valyard can exist canonically as a regeneration but not, like, the hero that we know as a Doctor doesn't become that. It's kind of like a, an alternate pathway. They really missed out. If they didn't do... I, didn't, I haven't read Time War Victorious, and if they didn't do that, it kind of sucks. But the Dream Lord, I guess, is kind of cool. ...was that he would appear during the Doctor's last lifetime. But now that we know that the Doctor has more than 13 lives, the value oh, yeah, time was could child. appear Fuck anywhere off. between the 10th Doctor... <laughs> And whatever the doctor's final it's fucked up so be, much. The it doesn't make any fucking so if sense. So ten is the earliest, the, the curator is not the Valyard. Perhaps the Dream Lord is the Valyard, or a pseudo version of the Valyard still forming, as the Dream Lord was made from the darker aspects of the Doctor's nature. Mm -hmm. If this is true, it's quite possible that this is a nice out for the writers. They uh, shown us the I want more payoff, portion, and now they personally. never have to think up anything clever to solve this ridiculously hard to answer question. Nelvana Cartoon. In 1990, following the Why cancellation they all look like Tom of the Baker? classic series, the Canadian animation studio Nelvana was pitched Obviously, a because he's the most Doctor popular one. animated series. The production never made it past the concept stages, but that does mean we got to see some of the concept art that could have been used in the show. It seems to have been set in a primarily futuristic world in its own separate canon, in the same style as Doctor Who and the Daleks. We see the Doctor, the TARDIS, K-9, and a companion or two. The Doctor appears to be a rough amalgamation of the third and fourth, at least in one of his designs. What I find most fascinating are the Dalek designs for this cartoon. What the fuck? They appear to be much larger and more battle-ready. Some levitate and others have treads Weird. like tanks. Fun stuff. The master is the war chief. The war chief was a renegade time lord that appeared in the second oh, doctor story war games. war games. Right. After his defeat at the hands of the doctor, he I, I thought of war chief and immediately jumped to time war of Nazi soldiers to do his bidding. Mm. Not much else is known about his character following this, but one particularly interesting theory is that this was actually the master in an incarnation they look kind of the same. Or Roger Delgado. The characters are strikingly similar. Not and that would actually make sense as opposed to the Morbius faces because we have we don't know a lot about the master six and how many regenerations he has. Colin Baker's era of the show is plagued by several big issues, including the writing, budget, but most egregiously, this horrendous Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> this terrible fashion choice was chosen to highlight the doctor's volatile mental state. But I think we can volatile all mental better state. better ways to go about doing that. <laughs> Multicolored goat. Volatile mental state. Big brain.
Anyway, <laughs> Colin Baker himself was it equates so easily. He was explaining the concept behind his doctor's personality. <laughs> that in is fact, fucking hilarious. He recently <laughs> described in an interview that his initial casting discussions included a description of his attire very closely matching what Christopher because that makes sense. Eventually, wear as volatile the doctor. Dude. It's hard to imagine a world where the sixth doctor actually had drip, but it could have happened. The Decca. The Decca were a group of ten young Gallifreyans in Time Lord Academy who made it their business to rebel and generally act like rabid children. Mm. Jokes aside, they genuinely believed that they could alter Time Lord society and make the universe a better place. Of course, the Doctor was among the members. Weird. Interestingly enough, one of the other members was referred to as Magnus, who was understood to have later become the War Chief, who was implied to be, that's right, the Master. Master. Stories of the Decca are very sparse, usually only existing in dream sequences or flashbacks in novels. Tier 8. Mm. This is your final... Okay. Do I know anything here? I know the Master is a timeless child... I know Dwan predates Missy. Uh, <laughs> I think I might know Ghost of Matt Smith because it's Matt Smith. <laughs> That's the doctor I've watched the most. I would imagine I know what that is. Final chance to leave. And I think I might know TARDIS Builders. Everything beyond this level is so strange. Oh, and, and I know the Legally Bible. That's the... The, the, the TV so movie. That knowing about it will alter uh, who you are. Concepts at the most that were all fucked. Fundamental level. You have been warned. The ghost of Matt Smith. I'm curious. In the first Doctor's oh, final episode, yeah. Okay. Yeah, episode, I know this. We see a very strange and unexplained event. While the Doctor is off regenerating, the controls of the TARDIS seem to magically move themselves. While this could be explained as a feature of the TARDIS being a living machine, there's actually a very interesting, different explanation. In, in Adventure Space anniversary and Time. Special, an adventure in space and time. That is so we cool. We see the story of Verity Lambert putting together Doctor Who in 1963. One of the final scenes of the film shows William Hartnell, depressed that he has to leave the show, receiving a depressed. vision of Matt Smith reassuring him that he has created a legacy that will last long into the future. This Man. scene is so wonderful and it may or may not it's have made so me cry multiple good. times but the important part is this Matt Smith actually plays with the dials of the TARDIS mm -hmm. while he's here and in the context of the scene William Hartnell yes. is the only one who can see him it's so, so invisible fucking to good. Else. So this 50-year-old mystery, the source of these moving dials during the first Doctor's it's regeneration, so good. is actually the ghost of Matt Smith. It's Fashion fucking Paris. awesome. This one's a doozy. In the late 1990s, writer Lawrence Miles penned several Doctor Who novels exploring the idea of a grand calamity sometime far off in the Doctor's future, involving a Time Lord syndicate known as the House of Paradox. After his 1999 story, Interference, received negative reception from Doctor Who fans, mm. Lawrence decided that he no longer had the right to continue producing content in the Doctor Jesus. Who canon and instead decided to write stories surrounding his creation, The House of Paradox, in a canon some might consider to be tangential to Doctor Who. Because the stories were legally not Doctor Who, they could not include legally. terms like Time Lord, Gallifrey, or TARDIS. Mm -hmm. To work around this, the characters in the stories had different, often grander names for each of these concepts and locations. Tardises were often called Great Houses, and instead of referring to various species as aliens, they were discussed as though they were gods. And obviously, the title of the organization itself was also changed from House Paradox to the Faction Paradox. The Faction Paradox series exists in books, comics, and audio dramas, and has even had an installment as late as 2019. Wow. Officially, the Faction Paradox books are not canonical to Doctor Who, but 
Some of the concepts that were introduced in the series are even adapted into Doctor Who stories, particularly Big Finish. So that's why I like to describe it as tangentially canon. TARDIS yeah. Builders. TARDISBuilders.com is a delightful little community okay, so I don't that know very this. few members of the fan base know about. It is essentially a DIY forum for anyone interested in constructing their own TARDIS, interior, Ooh. exterior, or any other potential piece of the time or How spaceship. How the fuck did they do imagine. that? There's a page for sightings where people can post pictures of TARDISes or just police boxes that they've seen out in the world, references for various designs uh, and size, color, and shape. There are also I'm galleries surprised where this people is this far often down. post their progress in building their own. That's TARDISes. cool tutorials, 3D printing catalogs, and a bunch more. If you're the creative type who likes to work with your hands and you want a TARDIS of your own, this would be a great place to check out. The master mm. is the timeless child. If only, dude. If this only it happened. This a theory, but pretty self-explanatory. If only, only it fucking happened. The timeless child for one Everything would be fine. So far. And of course, many people, including myself, are not fans of the decision to make the Doctor the timeless child. Yes. Many people have come to the conclusion that it would have been better narratively. It would have been the fucking perfect. The timeless child. It could have been so it easy for them to do. For why he has always hated the Time Lords. Why it's it blows my mind why they didn't. Why not? It's right there. He's in the story. The reasons he destroys Gallifrey. It's in the story. Why is it the Doctor of all the fucking Time Lords? Doesn't make any sense. It keeps it keeps the Doctor the same. It makes him not all powerful, Infinity Time Lord baby. It makes him just normal, and then the Master is the one that's bitter. It just why not? It fixes everything. Whatever. <laughs> why they treated him so poorly his entire life, and why he ended up burning Gallifrey to the ground. Not to mention, it's very in character for the master yes, to it lie is. to the doctor about something like this. And so, some fans are still holding out hope that this particular theory is true. It's not going to happen. Because Chibnall Jango doesn't care. Is a Big Finish audio drama series following the adventures of Henry Gordon Jago and George Lightfoot, both introduced in the Talons of Wang Chiang. As of 2018, there are 45 separate stories chronicling these two detectives solving Jesus, mysteries 45? revolving around alien threats in the 19th century. Weird. This is a pretty obscure one, but if you are starved for new Doctor Who content and you somehow made it through all of the regular Big Finish stories, here you go. Hmm. Third Doctor Levitation. This one is pretty silly, but uh, has outlandish implications on the canon if you take it seriously. Uh -oh. <laughs> in a very short comic uh -oh. strip, in TV Comic Annual 1971, long before Marvel Comics started publishing Doctor Who, this strip showed the third Doctor help the Brigadier stop an enemy spy by levitating. As it turns out, he learned to levitate <sighs> by reading about it in a book. So technically, the third Doctor and every Doctor following oh, that's, that's upsetting. has the ability to levitate. Oh, that is not good. Not to. I don't know, man. Leakly Bible. As you, you know, love the, the Leakly Bible. Doctor Who was canceled in the late 1980s. While we all know it was revived in 2005 after the 1996 movie, the 96 movie was actually the last of several different attempts to revive the series. The Leakly Bible refers to an outline of a potential series story for a 90s reboot of Doctor Who, yep. penned by John Leakley. This was meant John to be a reboot, and so it would adapt portions of the previous continuity instead of directly continuing them. If you're familiar with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, consider oh God. this like the transition from Part 6 to Part 7. Anyway, in Leakley's vision for Doctor Who, the Doctor is still a Time Lord, and one day discovers that he is the long-lost son of the infamous explorer known as Ulysses. It is then revealed that his enemy, the Master, has become Lord President of Gallifrey, and so the Doctor must begin a search throughout the universe to find his father so that the two of them can overthrow the evil Master. The very idea of giving the series an overarching plot what the is so fuck? antithetical to what we understand Doctor Who. Why? But that was sort of the point. 
Leakley was hired to recreate the series in a way that wouldn't get cancelled again. Alas, Leakley was fired after the stories he wrote were deemed too serious to fit in with the vision the higher-ups had for Doctor Who. And also it's forward. shit. Well, I don't like the idea of the original continuity ending after the seventh Doctor, I would like to see what our world today would look like if they had decided to go forward with the I don't. version of the show. I don't beware. I think that I'm... universe would be really cool to explore. Delta Ugh. Q Sigma X squared. Remember how Theta Sigma was the doctor's Ooh. nickname when he was in Time Lord Academy? Well, this jumbled mess of an equation is technically the doctor's full real name. First, the similarities. Both terms include Sigma, what the implying fuck? that they are referring to the same person. Yeah, Sigma Theta. So you probably want to know the origins, right? Well, in the 1972 book, The Making of Doctor Who, by Terence Dix and Malcolm Holt, this equation is used interchangeably the with the name Doctor. I can't believe Beyond that's a real that, sentence in, in a comics, book. There is a page that has this little equation, and scribbled next to it are the words, real name. Finally, it shows up in the TV show itself in the 1983 yeah, story, The Five Doctors, right on the stone pillar. So, is it the Doctor's real name? I mean, technically, yes. But at the same time, the way you interpret it is what really matters. His name might literally just be a mathematical equation, or this is simply an equation denoting the circular Gallifreyan that spells out what his real name is. Oh, or maybe that's his cool. His name is a time lord is particularly complex, and this equation is the only way yeah, the human it's brain can Yeah, because it's a Gallifreyan it. text that's being translated. I honestly have no idea, but at least it's better than Basil. That... Dewan <laughs> predates yeah. Missy. This is another fan theory designed Please. to fix the terrible writing of the Chibnall. Let era. it be true. Notice how there are quite a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this theory posits that Sasha Dewan's master does not follow Missy, but instead exists at some point between John Sim and Michelle Gomez. This would explain the sudden turnaround after Missy's character arc in series 10. And of also course, she died. With the Big Finish Missy series, she fucking died. Lumiot, like I know the master dies all, all the time, but he fucking. It all depends on what you consider canon. In the master the killed the master. There's Iris there's never been more Wild dead than that. Oh boy! All right, stick with me here. What if Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus was canon to the Doctor Who universe? I. I... Then you would get Iris Wild Time. Her first appearance what? in Doctor Who media. Yeah, just in Doctor Who media. She's what? been in other stuff was in the 1998 novel Short Trips, where it is revealed that she is the Time Lord who travels in a TARDIS what that looks fuck? like a double-decker bus, oh to which she refers God. as the Celestial Omnibus. Iris continues to pop up in various other stories and eventually receives her own spin-off series, where it is revealed that she is far more confusing than the Doctor could ever hope to be. Her time <sighs> stream is completely out of whack for one or many reasons, meaning she actually has several different pasts that are all equally true. She's technically a time <laughs> a human, and a goddess, and she has said at one point that she doesn't even live her life in the right order. Whatever that means. What the fuck? Her stories are essentially very similar to the Doctor's, but typically include a bit more silliness and make a bit As less As one sense. can imagine. If yes. you're up for a fun but very confusing time, Check out Iris Wild Time. Tier 9. Okay. I don't know anything here. I don't know a single goddamn thing. This level is obscurity incarnate. Only the most niche, the outcasts of humanity ever make it this far. There's no turning back now. The Great Teabag Mystery. Doctor Who exists across virtually all forms of media. Obviously television, movie, comics, audio, some games, and yes, even a live production. I'm referring mm. to Recall Unit, The Great Teabag Mystery. <laughs> now no, this isn't Doctor Who's only live production. There've yeah. actually been a handful. This is just the most obscure and the worst of all of them. 
Uh, the story was yeah, something I can only imagine how it didn't include a single character from the television series, unless you count the Supreme Dalek or a pre-recorded voice of the Brigadier. That last one wasn't intended. Nicholas Courtney was meant to be in the play, but due to a scheduling conflict, had to pull out of the production. And that's about all I can tell you about it. It's really hard to find anything about this one anywhere on the internet, but I challenge you to look around. Timeless Children I'm good. Leaks. The infamous Timeless oh, Children's no. story arc that ravaged the fandom in early 2020 was actually not much of a surprise to a small portion of that fan base. That's because the series 12 story arc. Right, it did get leaked. I remember this. Okay. Actually leaked. It got leaked. Yes, it did. As early as October 2019. The I remember. Returning, his casting as Sasha Dewan, the lone Fugitive Cyberman, the, the Death Particle, Ruth's existence as an yeah. earlier incarnation of the Doctor, and the Doctor's identity. I as do a remember this. Child were all leaked online in 2019. What was so interesting about these leaks is that they were shared in a pretty vague way. The poster wanted to avoid being CNC'd by the BBC. So there was an intense chatter amongst the fan base discussing the clues he left and trying to pick them out as valid or not as the series aired. Of course, the master appeared in the very first episode, and so this gave a lot of validity to the following predictions, which yeah. obviously all turned out to be true. So as many people were shocked and disappointed by the reveal of the Timeless Children, there was also a portion of the fan base that could actively dread it coming for weeks at a time. <sighs> I was one of those people. <laughs> also, just a quick note, if you happen to like the Timeless Children and you're watching this video, I have no hate towards you. We just happen yes. to disagree on this one thing. We do disagree, so, and that's okay. It's all cool between us. 850 that's all right. pounds plus court costs. They don't define the Doctor's this, you know. TARDIS is modeled after a 1960s police box because the chameleon circuit malfunctioned and it's stuck this way and has yeah. been for as long as the Doctor has been adventuring, give or take one or two stories. That said, police boxes happen to be owned by the police. And that is why in 1996, <laughs> the no, London no way. Metropolitan Police decided to sue the BBC for stealing their design and using it for a profit seriously not only that but the lawsuit lasted all the way until 2002 Jesus. six whole years and the kicker the police lost after all of that the huh. court ruled that the london police had to pay the bbc 850 pounds police. plus court costs that is hilarious for the overly litigious suit wacky <laughs> the final human That's a Doctor Who story in real life. In all of his time traveling the cosmos, the Doctor has seen quite a bit. But one of the more somber pieces of trivia about his adventures is that, depending on how you look at it, sounds it good. the Doctor has witnessed the final human death at at least one occasion. You could consider the death of Cassandra in the Russell T. Davies era to count as the final human death, but there are still many subspecies that existed, and so it wasn't a particularly upsetting moment. Damn. Now, I'm referring to the death of Seo in the fifth Doctor story, Singularity. There's a lot to the story, but the important thing to note is that the universe is ending, and the Time Lords have a way to live on afterwards, presumably into whatever universe arises next. Final sanction. The humans do not. And not we actually. get to see the fifth Doctor share a scene with a final human at the end of time. The Doctor watched the very last human die. Troughton's secret That is family. fucked and awesome. Patrick Troughton's second Doctor is infamous for his goofy clown-like persona, designed to mask a cunning, ingenious true nature beneath. Likewise, Patrick Troughton himself is not as wonderful as he may appear on the surface. Mm. As it turns out, Patrick Troughton left his wife in 1955 in order to spend his life with a woman he had been having an affair with, and they went on to have three children together. This would be bad enough, but Troughton actually managed to keep this double life a secret from his own mother, for more than 20 years until she died. He was able to pretend that he was still married to his first wife for that entire time. Truly bizarre. The Stranger. Hello? You Patrick Trout and we good? Doctor Who, but you're not legally allowed to. 
you make the stranger. In 1991, Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant reprised their roles as the Doctor and Perry Brown. Oh, I'm sorry, the stranger and Miss Brown in a direct-to-video series known as The Stranger. This video and later audio series is essentially Doctor Who in everything but name, with The Stranger and his companion traveling to different planets and time zones. They just never show exactly how they get there. Definitely probably not in a blue police box. Yeah. The series would go on to include various other Doctor Who alumni, including Nicholas Briggs and Sophie Aldred. This is a very weird, technically legal anomaly born from the wilderness years. Nothing more, yep. nothing less. Also, Colin Baker wanted to get naked in this for some reason. I, man, I don't know. Colin Hayakawa Baker. <laughs> in 1980, the Japanese company Hayakawa Bunko published several books written by Terry Nation, obviously set in the Doctor Who universe. The only problem? The cover artist for these books was not given clear instructions to <laughs> what the Doctor or any of the aliens in the series looked like. Combine that with what I'm sure were poor translations, and you get the incredible Hayakawa Bunko Doctor Who universe. It's pretty fun to look at these pictures of Daleks, which are kind of correct, and yeah. imagine which aspects were described and which weren't. It's like an artistic version of the telephone. That's game. cool. Oh, and the Doctor also does not look right at all. The first Doctor was a human scientist. When An Unearthly Child aired in 1963, the concept of Gallifrey, Time Lords, and Regeneration did not exist in the minds of the writers or producers. Mm -hmm. The hook of the show, as I'm sure you could tell from the title, was that the Doctor's identity was a mystery. The implication that was originally intended was that the Doctor and Susan were humans from the very far future. This would explain why their scientific knowledge was so great, why they had technology as advanced as the TARDIS, and why they seemed so unaccustomed to 20th century social norms. Obviously, we see the Doctor regenerate later, and it is explained that he is a Time Lord from Gallifrey. That said, in at least one instance, we see a scan of his body that shows he has only one heart, not Ooh. two, implying that he is, in fact, human. No matter how you slice it, something has to be retconned here. So it is possible to believe that the first doctor was, in fact, a human scientist. Or Tier you test. just Photoshop a second heart this into that image. Lowest okay. Okay. Um. Uh. <laughs> oh, come on. Now you gotta know something here. I think I might know Dr. Omega. And the moment isn't there. Maybe the I know that. It, it just has a weird name. Fuck. Okay. Depth, the pinnacle of your search for knowledge. Oof. These ideas will fundamentally alter the way you perceive Doctor Who and reality itself. The greater key is the moment. The primary conflict of the Faction Paradox series is known as the War in Heaven. This is, in fact, one of the alternate time wars discussed previously. One of the most powerful weapons meant to be used in this war is known only as the Greater Key. It is described in a rather vague way, and therefore, no one is sure exactly what it looks like. It has to be the moment. Some describe it to be a box covered in circular writing, while others claim that it is shaped like a metal rod. After the events of the it Faction has to be Paradox the moment. series, if it's the, the second time war, was sealed it's the away. exact. However, in yeah. the day of the Doctor, we it's see the, the War Doctor acquire the moment, a super weapon originally believed used to destroy both the Time Lords and the Daleks. The moment is such a cool Notice name that for the a moment gun. Appears to be a box or you know a bomb. Writing. But when it's love about to be activated by all three Doctors, it extends a metal rod. The implication is obvious. The greater key is, in fact, the moment. Yep. Further substantiating that the Faction Paradox series is canonical, Cannon. or at least tangentially. I mean, why not? You know. Hidden General Wiki. It doesn't fuck Doctor up anything. Doctor Who General is an obscure fan-made wiki created by 4chan. primarily users of 4chan. Yeah, that 4chan. That's... It's 
less of a compendium of actual Doctor Who trivia not good, guys. and more of a compendium of the various jokes and memes that have been shared between this community for the past decade or so. Oh, God. It also links to a discussion forum, but good luck getting in. That's password protected. The wiki is available to everyone. However, the URL often changes, and it's not part of a typical domain. Of course, to maintain the integrity of this niche community, I would never do something so brash as to share that URL with you. <laughs> the wiki is filled with numerous inside jokes, including how both everything and nothing is canon. Every time a new episode is released, the show has now been ruined forever and the various ages of the series. <laughs> For those curious, we are currently in the glitter age. And fair warning, it's cool. anything but politically correct. Cliff, Lola, and Biddy. During the series' infancy, many oh, no. of the staples were still up in the air, including oh. the look of the TARDIS itself. And one of the original scripts for the first episode, yeah. titled Nothing at the End of the Lane, the TARDIS was meant to be invisible, not take the form of a police box. In this version of the story, penned by C.E. Weber, the humans Cliff, Lola, and Biddy were to discover the Doctor's invisible time machine, which actually wouldn't do any time traveling, but instead would accidentally shrink them down, like in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> well, the episode was never made, and the companions' names were later changed to Ian, Barbara, Barbara and, and Susan. Susan. The general plot was eventually adapted into the planet of the giants. Notably, mm. the script refers to the Doctor as Doctor Who, just like uh -oh. in the Peter Cushing Dalek movies. Oh, no. The Count of St. Germain. The Count of St. Germain was a famous 18th century European explorer who had vast knowledge and interest in philosophy, science, the arts, oh. and alchemy. Incredibly eccentric, I know this. he went by various different names and was described I know by this. the high Game society theory. around him as an incredible Game theory. very wise philosopher. Why is this so far down? It was on Game Theory. All Everyone knows this now. What is most interesting is that he claimed to be 500 years old. Yeah. His true origin was a secret. Although, after being arrested in England under suspicion of espionage, he Real recounted that he was Italian, Spanish, and Polish, a priest, a fiddler, a nobleman, <laughs> and that he was married to an incredibly wealthy woman from Mexico. <laughs> he was released the next day without charge. He was also known to be fluent in multiple languages, an excellent musician and singer, and was able to strike up meaningful conversation with educated people in all different sorts of fields. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of his life, he revealed to close confidants that he was in fact the son of a Transylvanian prince. He died in the late 1700s, but there have been, been multiple seen. accounts of him appearing in public as late as the mid-20th century. Mm -hmm. If you haven't put two and two together yet, the implication real life is that doctor. the Count is really the Doctor. Now, if he's not the Doctor, I'll say this much. He's definitely someone the Doctor would probably like to talk to. <laughs> That's Abbott's for sure. perfect companion. In issue number 360 of Doctor Who magazine, Russell T. Davies revealed in an interview that Paul Abbott had at one point written a script for a series that revealed something astounding about Rose Tyler's history. She had, in fact, been genetically created by the Doctor to be his perfect companion. Her entire being and history, a complete fabrication, so that the Doctor would have uh. an unmatched traveling partner. Davies vetoed the idea because he believed it ruined Rose's yeah. character, but he loved the story itself and struggled with cutting it from the series. How mind-bending of an episode would that have been? I'm sort of hoping this gets adapted into a future story, but I'm not sure I'd like the Doctor yeah. to have done something so upsetting. Fucking creepy. <laughs> hmm. Sunset at Mont Major. The Sunset at Mont Major is one of many oil paintings by the great Vincent Van Gogh, dated 1888. It depicts a sunset over a garden landscape with unique foliage. What is perhaps most interesting is that in the upper left corner, a rectangular blue structure stands out against the It's skyline. not the TARDIS. It's Its authenticity a as a Van Gogh original was only determined in 2013, 
three years after the 11th Doctor episode, Vincent and the Doctor. Clearly, there is the connection between Van Gogh and the Doctor that arises from the 2010 episode, but also that is obviously the blue a castle. rectangle in the top corner looks far closer to a TARDIS than the Mount Major Abbey that it's supposed to represent. Yeah, the implications I mean, it looks like it. Obvious. But it's Utah obviously cave not. Paintings. Inside Utah's Horseshoe Canyon, several caves house ancient paintings known as petroglyphs left by indigenous peoples thousands of years ago. The greatest estimates place these paintings at up to 8,000 years old, although yeah. some argue they might be as recent as 900 years. They seem to show various people and animals, as are common in these sorts of petroglyphs, but what is most interesting is the large rectangular shapes with an individual raised portion at the center. It's a TARDIS. It looks like a TARDIS. From thousands of years before anything resembling a police box would have existed. I mean, these are cool. Closet. These are cool. That those are connections that can be made. And I, mean, I, I kind of does look like a TARDIS with like a wobbly uh, kind of loose form that to these it. These designs but are the early people's depictions it's obviously of like, spirits or gods, otherworldly yeah. beings. I wonder what tall box-shaped phenomenon could have inspired It's obviously them shoulders. Because look at the other box. humans. There's no arms on them. It's the exact same thing. And that's just a, a bigger, Fine. more Perhaps royal... Appearing human. and disappearing out of thin air? Dr. Omega. Doctor Who premiered in 1963. Half a century earlier, Dr. Omega was released by French writer Arnold Gallopine. The titular Dr. Omega and his two companions travel to Mars in a machine of his own design. On Mars, they run into multiple different alien species that they have to evade before eventually returning to Earth. Obviously, there are some surface-level similarities to Doctor Who, but what is most astounding is that Doctor Omega himself bears an incredibly strong resemblance yeah. to William Hartnell as the what first the Doctor. What the fuck? That is crazy. This is so obvious, it's even stated as a fact on the book's Wikipedia page. Go look it up, I'm not joking. Dr. Omega is not listed in any hell? of the original transcripts or production notes by Verity Transcips. Lambert or any of the production staff for the original series. And so it's completely what the up fuck? to speculation that is so crazy. whether or not this book was inspiration for the series or instead a, a very strange, coincidence. even unearthly coincidence. Whoo! <laughs> well, that is it. You have Jesus made it. Jesus Christ. That was awful. <laughs> oh my god. I will never, never forget Miss Frizzle fucking Doctor Who stories. That was crazy. I'm surprised how much I knew and how little I knew at the same time. A lot of this was Classic Who and Wilderness Years and Virgin New Adventures, Big Finish, spinoffs. Uh, as one would imagine, those are the most ambiguous parts because those are when the series was just like completely derailed and totally fucked but i i enjoyed the more theoretical and, and interesting things and uh yeah that's pretty much all i have to say this was really cool and uh yeah so anyways guys hope you enjoyed this video if you like and comment share sync and remember stay gamer